You know, if you look around the world, there are some people who are able to make a real difference. Elizabeth is leading on the work that the Wildlife Conservation Society is undertaking in relation to hunting and trade in bushmeat. She began working for WCS as our uh, Malaysian country director, working especially with the state government. Liz really established herself as one of the most significant Asian primatologists um, working in the field. Uh, she focused especially on proboscis monkeys. She's really pushed very hard on the conservation agenda. She's done extensive empirical research around the wildlife, particularly the primates of, of Sarawak, and that's probably what she's best known for. She has been very recently advising the government of Sarawak in preparing a master plan for the protection of wildlife and biodiversity uh, in that important part of Malaysia. The forest is being opened up by logging concerns. The logging roads opened up the forest to hunters. She chased up on a whole series of issues, um, you know, identifying, noticing that forest was suddenly quiet and looking at what had happened to wildlife working out that you could actually understand much about the wildlife by looking at local markets and what was on sale there. Liz, uh, fairly early on, recognized that this was really an important issue for the state of Sarawak. In fact, it was a big issue for tropical forest conservation as a whole. Um, and working very closely with the state government in Sarawak, she really developed the model program that looked at how you manage wildlife and how do you protect wildlife from commercial hunting in tropical forest environments. She is a key global figure campaigning for wildlife conservation. And the fact that we have made significant impacts on the bushmeat trade in Africa and Latin America and Asia really come out of her field experience out of her understanding of what it really takes to do conservation in tropical environments. Elizabeth hasn't just been active in doing things, she's also been hugely active in terms of communicating what she does. Um, there's a huge amount of advocacy work, um, but she's also uh, written very extensively and she's published a huge number of articles um, in both the popular and the scientific press. My memories of Elizabeth go back uh, a long time and to, to when she was an undergraduate and the zoology department. Oh, this is a, a very t tremendous uh, feeling of uh, pleasure and excitement, satisfaction actually, because uh, uh, students that, that go on in a, an area of, uh, of, of great importance for wildlife and uh, protecting the planet uh, are quite rare. She got an, uh, an Order of the Golden Ark Award from the Netherlands and then most recently an MBE. She's about as dogged as you can get. Um, she is uh, focused. Um, she decides what she, where she wants to go. She decides what her goals are, what her objectives are, and she goes about it with a single-minded determination, which you kind of need in conservation, but she does it um, in a way that, in a disarming way, um, that flattens all opposition. Elizabeth is unable to be with us tonight, so I'd like to ask her niece, Rachel, to come forward and collect the award on her behalf. Um, yes, well, thank you very much, as you've just seen the work of uh, Elizabeth there. Um, how am I going to do justice to that, really? <laughs> um, Elizabeth has always summed up her career, as you've probably seen from the footage, for a conservationist as needing to wear both muddy boots and smart shoes, really. Um, she's waded literally, quite, quite literally, chest deep through piranha-infested waters one week and then attended top-level board meetings in the States the next. Um, as you saw, she is now the world's uh, leading um, authorities <laughs> on some of the endangered monkeys um, and for some of her troubles as well she's contracted not only sort of typhoid but cholera um, at the same time 
um, for her troubles and still wanted to go back, which is quite amazing. Um, I think Elizabeth is so good at what she does because she doesn't only look at the animals, but she looks at the human dimension of conservation. So we all know that many primates are killed for food or for money, but you have to understand why that is happening and what you can do about it. And hence, as you saw, she has successfully worked with governments to produce national strategies to stop this trade. In Malaysia, for example, two years after the government turned all her recommendations into full national policy, the local urban trade in wildlife has virtually come to a standstill in that country. And the, the wildlife includes some of those incredible monkeys and things you've just seen on the screen. So it's just the most amazing achievement. Um, today, Elizabeth is the Vice President of Species for the Wildlife Conservation Society, um, which is an organization that heads 500 major conservation projects in over 60 countries. Um, she's come a very long way from the biology labs of your university in the 70s, <laughs> but it all started here. Um, so she is very much one of your own, and she loved her time here. Um, the whole career just wouldn't have taken off, really, without starting at the university. Um, obviously, I have to give out a few thanks for her. Um, her undergraduate tutor, Peter Davis, she wanted me to thank because he supported her in her dream to study primates. She also wants me to thank the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Greenaway, uh, Mr. Mike McNamara, who spoke at the start, and obviously to Joe Dunn for performing this ceremony just so well. Um, she would also like to thank all her colleagues at WCS, particularly uh, John Robinson, not only um, the head of conservation programs, but also a very good friend. Um, and she would like me on this occasion to dedicate this award to her late parents, as this is one of these smart shoes occasions. Thank you very much.